final instalment of Explainsley here on Tonightly. Are you guys ready for some hilarious and informative comedy? Yes! Well, prepare to be disappointed. We're not getting renewed. I'm extremely pissed off about the state of the country right now. And quite frankly, I've run out of fucks to give. <laughs> so, are you ready for some angry, sweary ranting, barely disguised as comedy? Yeah! Well, that's what you'll fucking get! <clears throat> This one is dedicated to the kids. Hey kids, say goodbye to your old Prime Minister, Malcolm Turnbull. He's not dead, he's just going to live on a farm. A wonderful farm where he can give speeches to Goldman Sachs and run around in his leather jacket as much as he likes. <laughs> bye bye Malcolm, thanks for all the memories and all the nice words you said about how we should do something about the greatest existential threat facing mankind. Climate change is real, it is affecting us now, and it is having a particularly severe impact on Australia. We cannot be seen as a party of climate sceptics, of do-nothings on climate change. I will not lead a party that is not as committed to effective action on climate change as I am. No, Malcolm, you won't. <laughs> The truth is, you never did, because the party that you've led twice in your career and as coalition partner of the Nationals could barely give two shits about climate change. And towards the end, it seems, neither could you. The coalition has dumped the idea of a clean energy target. Also coming up, Malcolm Turnbull's humiliating backflip on his energy policy to save his leadership. Last week's party room approved version of the National Energy Guarantee has now been scrapped. The legislation to move forward with the emissions component of the National Energy Guarantee will not be able to pass the House of Representatives. Man, Malcolm Turnbull was so good at backflips, especially for someone who doesn't have a spine. <laughs> this is the same guy who wrote a piece in 2009 called Tony Abbott's Climate Change Policy is Bullshit, in which he wrote, the fact is that Tony Abbott and the people who put him in his job do not want to do anything about climate change. They do not believe in human-caused global warming. Many Liberals are rightly dismayed that on this vital issue we are not simply without a policy, but we are now without integrity. We have given our opponents the irrefutable, undeniable evidence that we cannot be trusted. Yeah, turns out that evidence was bang on. I would happily keep talking about your legacy of disappointment, Malcolm, but I actually think that this guy from 2010, talking about Kevin Rudd, sums it up pretty well. Because he did not have the guts to take on this issue, he squibbed it and abandoned it. And he wonders now why people ask, what do you stand for, Kevin? What do you stand for, Kevin? What do you believe in? If you do not believe in action on climate change, what is the substance, the political substance of your leadership? And the answer is, there is nothing there. <laughs> and now, on behalf of myself and these little kids here, two words. Fuck this. <laughs> Fuck it. Fuck the hypocrisy, the weakness and inertia on this issue that your political career represents. Fuck the fact that the choice of who was going to replace you as Prime Minister was between a dude who jokes about Pacific Islanders losing their homes thanks to rising sea levels and this guy. This is coal. Don't be afraid. The Don't be scared. The hurt treasurer. You. Fuck that. <laughs> Burning coal might not hurt you in your lifetime, ScoMo, but it's probably going to hurt me, and it will definitely hurt these guys. So fuck this noise. You've let us know your top priorities as PM are the drought and getting energy prices down. Well, the Farmers' Federation reckon climate change is making the drought worse, and renewables are forecast to halve wholesale energy prices over the next four years. But you and your government have said fuck that, and now our new energy minister is anti-renewables campaigner Angus Taylor. Out with the old, in with the new energy policy. The challenge now is to accept that we had a miss and that we're now fixing it. The next generation abandoning subsidies for renewables in favour of renewed investment in coal and gas. We have to leverage those resources, not leave them in the ground. Fuck that. And fuck the fact Scott Morrison's new Chief of Staff was the Deputy Chief Executive of the Minerals Council of Australia and also worked at Rio Tento. And fuck the fact that our new Environment Minister, Melissa Price, is a former lawyer for the mining industry who says she would support the construction of a new coal-fired power station. Hey, Scott Morrison, why don't you just go the full distance and just open up your cabinet to Captain Planet eco-villains like Luton Plunder and Hoggish Greenley? Fuck this! The government says they will honour the Paris Climate Agreement but can't really seem to name a mechanism to reduce emissions, so fuck that. Fuck the fact that Nationals Deputy Leader Bridget McKenzie A posed like this in a photograph <laughs> and B last month, last month said, I'm not afraid to say the C word, coal, coal, coal. Fuck the fact that a member of the Australian government saying that is considered less offensive than when a dumb comedy show uses the other C word. Fuck the fact that Tony Abbott has any interest
influence on this policy area at all. Fuck that he called climate change absolute crap, then said that coal is good for humanity, then said climate change is probably doing us good, and then became a key figure in destroying Australia's chances of having an emissions trading scheme or a price on carbon or even the limp, half assed compromise that was the neg. Hey, Tony, I know you think your daughters are hot. Well, in the future, they're going to be a lot hotter thanks to your work in helping cook the fucking planet. <laughs> Actually, rest assured, this is a multi-partisan fuck that. Fuck the Labor Party on this. From Paul Keating's dismissal of environmental issues in the early 90s, to Rudd's failure to take action on climate change, despite this being the greatest moral challenge of our time, to Julia Gillard's Citizens' Assembly nonsense. Fuck One Nation for their denialism. Fuck the Greens for failing to get any lasting serious climate policy through when more Australians want climate action now than before the carbon tax. Fuck the whole political class failing to get anything actually done. Fuck the fact that fossil fuel companies made almost a million dollars worth of political donations last year, and fuck the fact those dollars were accepted. Fuck the fact the coal lobby spent $3.6 million on his massive ad campaign last year, and fuck the fact they called it coal, it's an amazing thing. <laughs> fuck the fact that when one academic went looking for people who have moved between positions in the fuel, fossil fuel and mining industries and senior positions in government over the past 10 years, he found more than 180 names. Fuck Australia for being one of the largest carbon emitters per capita on earth, for our emissions last year being the highest on record, and now we have bushfires in winter. Fuck you, bushfires! <laughs> Fuck the fact that Paris, or no Paris, some scientists say the entire world needs to get to zero carbon emissions well before 2040. Fuck this impossible situation in which we as a country aren't able to figure out our climate and energy policy because of our high electricity prices, and one of the major reasons why our electric electricity prices are so high is because we can't figure out our climate and energy policies. <laughs> Fuck the persistence of climate change denialism in this country despite that position putting you at odds with the CSIRO, NASA, the United Nations, Elon Musk, all the countries that signed the Paris Climate Agreement, the Howard government, ExxonMobil, and Margaret fucking Thatcher, <laughs> who was talking about the effects of climate change 28 years ago. In fact, fuck the fact the world officially recognised this problem in 1979, and we've known about the greenhouse gas effects for ages, as demonstrated by this Australian newspaper article about it from the year 19 fucking 12. Fuck how unfair the impacts of climate change are. Fuck me, Tom Ballard, for not knowing enough about this really, not really caring enough, and secretly not wanting to give up my privileged standard of living to change it. And fuck the fact that that same standard of living will no doubt insulate me from the immediate worst effects of climate change in the future. Most of all, fuck the new research telling us that climate change will make hundreds of millions more people nutrition deficient, which may lead to troubles with wound healing, infections and diarrhoea, which means on top of everything else, climate change could quite literally give us the shits. <laughs> Sorry about that. No. Just to get a tad worked up. Because politics in this country are broken. A system just isn't equipped to deal with a challenge like climate change because it requires political parties to think further ahead than the next election and to maybe develop policies that might go against the interests of their donors. Our politicians have been shithouse at this for decades. And if you're a young person like me, you should feel pissed off. We should feel pissed off because we're getting ripped off by these people and we're the ones who are going to have to deal with it. It's going to be on me, it's going to be on these guys. Hey guys, how you going? Nice to see you. Aww. Thanks so much for coming along. Lovely to see you. Oh, what's that? Using children like this is emotionally manipulative? I don't know, do you guys feel manipulated? <laughs> oh, now, now, now. Pop on your ghost masks just like we practiced. There we go. You know, someone once said that politics is about conviction and a commitment to carry out those convictions. Now, sure, that person was Malcolm Turnbull, but the sentiment isn't wrong. So, hey, Australian politicians, please be people of your convictions. You work for us, not for them, but for them. Be people of your convictions. Be people of your convictions. And quite frankly, if you have no conviction about taking real action on climate change, then get out of the way. Because we are running out of time and you are slowing us down. Wave goodnight, kids. Say goodnight. Thanks so much for watching our second last episode. We'll see you tomorrow.